P-O-S-T! P-O-S-T. Post, the serials you like the most, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's Roundup Time on the Double R Bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The Double R Bar Ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills. The wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis. The Queen of the West, Dale Evans. And in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Buckaroos, has your mom got that shelf filled with post cereals? Well, I'll bet she's having a hard time keeping it filled because post cereals are good. And mom won't mind if you eat lots of them. She knows what we know, that you can count on anything bearing the brand name Post. Well, sir, Jonah rode over to the old deserted fort near Rocky Point today. You know, he served there when he was in the Army, and he kind of likes to visit the place, even though there's nobody around there anymore. There's nothing much doing in town, I guess. I'm sure this is the house where Fred Pratt lives. We'll chance it anyhow. I'll knock. As quick as the answers, let him have it. You're fast. We don't want to take any chances with Pratt. Keep your mind on one thing. We want his half of that map and we're taking it. Wait. I hear him coming. Yeah. Now! Get in on this, Harris! I got him! Yeah, that got him. All right, shut the door. Now drag him into that side room while I start looking for his half of the map. We'll have to work fast. We want to be all set when Maddie McCormick shows up. Maddie's coming up the walk, Harris. Well, I can keep Pratt under control if you can manage Matt. I can manage two or three like Maddie. I won't have any trouble on that score. Quiet now. Ah, hello, Maddie. Come on in. Ed Bailey, I didn't know you... Yeah, I'm here. Come on in, Matty. There's been a change in the plans. I thought this was Fred Pratt's place. Yeah, it is, but Fred had to leave for a couple of days. Something important came up, and he asked me to handle this. Well, now, Ed, I don't know. Oh, there's nothing to worry about. Sit down, I'll tell you the whole story Fred told me. Then you'll know I'm not working anything funny. I was supposed to see nobody but Fred on this. He and I... You and Fred served time together in the pen, Matt, I know. While you were there, you both did some favors for a lifer named Bren Kelly. Am I right so far? Yeah. Well, Kelly hid some loot out where when he was sent up. The day before Fred Pratt was released, Kelly gave him half of the map showing where the loot was hidden. He told Fred to sit tight until you got out. You'd have the other half, and the loot was to be split between you. Well, I... I couldn't get that information from anybody but Fred now, could I, Matt? Not that I know of. Okay. Fred knew you'd need money fast after just getting out, but he had to go away, so he told me to handle things. He gave me his half of the map. See? Now, where's yours? Why, I... Fred wants me to tend to this, man. Where's your half of the map? Well, I'm not carrying it on me. I, I was afraid to after just getting out of the pen. I figured the authorities might trail me, so I stashed it away. Oh, you did, huh? Because I don't mind showing you where it is, as long as you're working with Fred... I hid the map in that old deserted fort at Rocky Point. You've seen it. Yeah, that's it. fine, Matty. We'll head out there right away. Oh, I have a partner working with me. Maybe you know him. Dick Harris. We'll take Harris along. He's a real sweet hombre. Come on, Matt. Come on. Ah, you're wasting time. Well, I seem to have forgotten where I... We'll give you one minute to locate that map. One, and that's all. Well, it's here in the old mess hall. I I, I hid it here, but I forget... Get exactly... it, Matt. Get it if you want to live. It's up there. Laying on top of the rafters. Yeah, well, that's better. I'll get it. Half the loot belongs to me. Don't forget, Bren Kelly said there that... Is, that... Good, that's good. All right, Matt. Now we'll take care of you. Take care of me? What does that mean? You don't want half of that loot, do you, Matty? And I'll tell you why you don't. You won't have any use for money from now on. No, no, no. You won't be able to spend money where you're going. Well, Ed, I don't want the map. You take it. Go ahead. I don't need it. 
pair of eyes were watching Matt McCormick as he stands quavering before Ed Bailey and Dick Harris. The eyes belong to Jonah Wilde. Jonah sees the gun in Ed Bailey's hand belch fire. He sees Matt McCormick fall. He sees the two men pocket a piece of paper, then ride off out of the fort. When they have gone, Jonah runs over, examines Matt, then races to his horse and rides toward Mineral City. Dale! Dale! Dale, do you know where Roy is? Jonah, what's the matter? Yeah. I'm right here, but I thought you went out to the old fort. Oh, the old fort's been desecrated. The place where General Thomas Kenneth Rowe growed a full beard has been despoiled. The place is... Oh, whoa, been... here now, Jonah. Just tell us what happened. Never mind the embroidery. Well, I was in the old mess hall, and two pig-eyed mozos just killed, killed another one. Well, you must have been dreaming, Jonah. Nobody ever goes to the old fort. Roy, I know what I seen. Jonah, are you sure it wasn't just General Rowe's ghost doing a jig? Yeah. Now, just a second. The general never danced a jig in his life. The bunny hug was as far as he done been. Roy, I tell you, I did see a feller killed. Hey, he's serious, Dale. Two fellers had another one there. They pulled a the gun and they never give him a chance. Well, let's get back out there. Spoiled my whole day. Dale, you keep your eyes open here. See if any strangers come into town. Let's go, Jonah. If there's been a killing, the quicker we get on the trail, the better. <laughs> Wait here, Trigger. Yeah, Roy, it happened right over there. They didn't have no respect for tradition at all. I say, they didn't have no respect. Why, that mess hall's where General Rowe sat down and ate with his men. The General sat down and ate with his men, Roy. The General must have believed in equality. Well, no, the officers' club had run out of food. There, see, Roy? Yeah, I see. Mm. Managed to play the bear meat was served over this very spot. Yeah, I know this man, Jonah. Eh? Huh? Matty McCormick, a cattle rustler. He went to the pen a few years ago. I didn't think he'd served his full turn. Hey, this looks like Dale coming. Convolutions. What's the trouble, Dale? Oh, buttermilk. Oh, something happened in Mineral City, Roy. And I thought you ought to know about it. What's that? Well, the sheriff found Fred Pratt. Hey, Roy, isn't that Maddie McCormick? Yeah, he must have been released from prison. What were you saying about Fred Pratt? I wonder if Fred Pratt connects up with this. He and Matt were both ex-convicts. Well, you'd better let us in on what's wrong with Fred. He'd been beat up. The sheriff found him wandering around in a daze, babbling about knowing where some loot is and wanting to split it with somebody. Pistol pointing ran her hands in the old mess hall, some situation. Fred had been hurt pretty badly. The doctor won't let him be questioned for a while. Well, we've reached a dead end here. There's some footprints just outside, but the country's too rocky to follow a trail. Say, Roy, one of them killers limped a little, favored his left leg. That may help. His left leg? Well, when I first seen him, I was reminded of the time at Corporal Dumpy. A man with a when limp I... checked in at the hotel just after you left, Roy. Oh, hmm. he don't ever let me finish. I wonder if they don't like Corporal Dumpy. Well, what was his name? Corporal Dumpy liked everybody. I don't remember offhand, Roy. Well, let's check on him. Jonah will be able to identify him if he's the killer. We'd better move fast, too, before the outlaws get clear out of the territory. <laughs> Find out what room you gave this man, Dale. Jonah and I will go up and see if he's in. All right. When he comes to the door, Jonah, I'll act as though I've made a mistake, and if he's the right man, you nudge me. Uh-huh. Then we'll move in on him. Yeah. Well, as I started to tell you at the fort, Corporal Dumphy had a limp once, and the whole thing happened on account of an ostrich plume. Roy, to... there he is. Where? Chucks. In the lunch room. That man sitting alone there at the counter. Jonah, is that one of the men you saw at the fort? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is, Roy. But he ain't the fellow who done the shooting. Wait here with Dale. I'll go talk to him. Roy crosses the hotel lobby and enters the lunchroom. He goes straight toward the man Dale has pointed out, being careful to keep himself between the man and the front door. Uh, howdy, mister. I'd like to see you when you finish your dinner. You talking to me? Yeah. Do I know you? Not yet, but... Uh... Go ahead, finish eating. I'd rather talk outside. I don't know whether we'll do any talking or not. Don't think we will. And I'm finished eating now. Then let's walk outside. Why should I? So you won't be embarrassed? Yeah. All right. You must have me mixed up with somebody else. Come on. Just got in town a couple of hours ago. Which direction did you come from? Over by Rocky Point? Look, I don't know what you're after, but this is new territory to me. I'm a stranger. We'll do our talking right here. I tell you, you got me mixed up with somebody else. Is this the man, Jonah? 
Yeah, that's the fellow. Oh, wait a minute. What is this, a frame? I'll tell you what it is. My sidekick witnessed a killing out at the fort near Rocky Point. He says you were in on it. Oh, he's lying. He can't railroad me. Uh, I was out there, yes, but I didn't kill anybody. Just got released from prison. I went to the fort so I could be alone. Sort of pulled myself together before I tried to get a job. It was another ex-convict who was shot. Maybe the shooting was accidental, was it? Or maybe your partner did it, the man you were with. All right. I'll tell you the truth. But don't railroad me. My partner did it. There was three of us. My partner and the third man. Matt McCormick? Yeah. My partner and Matt had a fight. My partner killed Matt. It happened so fast I couldn't stop it. I... Where does this partner of yours hang out? Well, if you saw the shooting, you know I didn't do it, don't you? I already said that. All right, then. I don't want to go back to prison. I'll tell you where my partner is. I'll even testify against him. I made up my mind I'd go straight and I'm going. Where's your horse? At the hitching rail in front of the post office. It's a long way to where my partner is. Clear to three rivers. That's not long when a man's after a killer. Come on, Dale, Jonah. The three of us will ride there with our new friend. <laughs> How about them? How about them? How about those great nuts? How about the great nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those great nuts? They are so good, good for you too. The two-minute energy works for you. So how about them? How about them? How about great nuts flakes? Yep. How about those grape nuts flakes? Take an old hand's advice, partners. Tomorrow, when you roll out of your bunk, corral a bowl full of that great energy-given cereal, Grape Nuts Flakes. Grape Nuts Flakes are called the great two-minute energy cereal because two minutes after you polish off a bowl full, their powerhouse whole wheat energy starts to go to work for you. That's the kind of quick energy you fellers and gals need. You'll go for Grape Nuts Flakes sugar-roasted flavor. It's delicious. So ask Mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the two-minute energy cereal. Look for Roy's picture on the front of the package. How about them? How about them? How about Grape Nuts Flakes? Grape Nuts Flakes, one of the famous triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. Roy, Dale, and Jonah arrive in Three Rivers, accompanied by Dick Harris, who was promised to hand over his partner. Harris leads them toward a ramshackle, unpainted store building. The windows are covered by the dirt of months. The gloomy, only half-lighted interior can be seen dimly. Roy knows at once that this is a hangout for criminals and owl hoots. Slow-moving, foreboding figures can be seen through the dirty windows. Go ahead, Harris. We'll follow. And I'd keep my hands away from my guns when I was here, if I were you. We know how to take care of ourselves. Yeah, shucks, yes. I fit in 12, 13 wars. Nobody got me yet. Boy, what a place. Which man is your partner, Harris? Well, he'll be in the back. I'll go back and get him. If he saw you, he... We'll go with you. Keep walking. When I should go alone. He's fast with his gun, he'll... If we let you go alone, you might uh, be fast with your feet. Right through the back door. <laughs> Fellow must think we're raw recruits. You folks have got me wrong. I'm on your side. Let's get that door open. Sure, why not? Uh, Burma, here's some people to see Ed Bailey. They want him on a charge of murder. Hold it, Harris. We'll do the talking. Bring him on in. Should we go? It's all right, Dale. You know where we can locate uh, Bailey fast? That's Ed Bailey you want? And on a murder charge? Where is he? You're not going to find Ed. And if you want to know why, look behind you. Roy turns. Half a dozen ugly-faced gunslingers stand in the doorway. Others, owl hoots from the front of the store, are moving slowly forward. Every man has his gun hand close to his belt. And every belt carries one, sometimes two guns. You tricked us, eh, Harris? Yet you don't want to be sent back to prison. You won't be sent back, Harris. We'll take care of these three. That's why I brought them here. You and Bailey been to see the Marshal yet? Not yet, Burma. We had a little trouble getting the map. Marshal Weber won't wait for the money. And the quickest we can get the money is tomorrow morning. He'll have to wait until then. I'll talk to him. What about these three? They got more honest than Weber has. I told you we'd take care of these three. You just bring the money here as fast as you can so I can give it to Marshal Weber. Okay. But see that you don't pay it or Weber until he hands over the stuff we're buying. The right stuff, too. 
So he doesn't blackmail us a second time. Wait a minute. What are you threatening me for? I'm doing you a favor acting as a go-between. If it wasn't for me, Weber would send you up the river again. Sorry, Burma. Well, that's better. Lefty, you and a couple of the boys take care of these three. Ride them out to our shack at Willow Springs. Oh, uh, if I was you folks, I'd go along peaceable. We'll take your advice, Burma, but I won't guarantee that we'll use it long. Roy, Dale, and Shona are disarmed and escorted by three trigger men to a shack near Willow Springs. There, they're held prisoner, not knowing what their fate is to be, whether the gang plans to release them eventually or do something else. The three armed men remain outside the cabin on guard. Yeah, yeah, fit in 14, 15 wars. Was took prisoner and every dad ratted one of them. But this is the only time I ain't been able to escape. We'll figure out some way. How, Roy, with three armed men outside guarding us? Oh, Shaw, I wish Rabbit Head Robbie was here. That's a new one, isn't it? I never heard of him. Well, right name was Private E.E. E. Robertson. But his head was shaped like a rabbit's. Come to a sharp point at the front teeth, you see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, sir, me and old Rabbit Head was took prisoner during the East Border War and was put in a cabin, of, well, a whole lot like this. I say a whole lot like this, mm. with a guard stationed outside. And just see, I mean, you listening, Roy? I'm trying to think about her own situation. Well, now, pay attention to this. may give you an idea. Well, sir, old Rabbit Head, he noticed a knot hole in a board at the side of the cabin. Now, on account of his head coming to a point, he managed to get his front teeth clean through this here knot hole. Then he waited and he waited. And finally, the guard backed up a little. Oh, Ooh, no. Jonah. That was what old rabbit head was waiting for. He bit. I say he bit and he bit hard. Oh, Jonah. Hung on for dear life. The guard struggled and fought and dropped his rifle. Well, sir, that was just what I was waiting for. Mm. I run out and grabbed the rifle and slugged the guard. Mm. Then you and rabbit head escaped. Well, I did. You did? Yeah. Yeah, it was a sad thing about poor old rabbit head. He got his pointy face wedged into that knot hole. We couldn't get him out. But what happened to him? Well, we shipped him and the, and the plank to a tree surgeon, but rabbit head starved to death before he got there. Oh, Roy, we're <laughs> wasting our time listening to this. Starved to death, and then was buried with full military honors, including the bugler. You see, Rabbit Head always wanted to be a bugler himself, but every time he tried, the mouthpiece would get stuck. And by the time a squad got done pulling it off, the point would have stretched, and uh, there wasn't any jab. I think I'm getting an idea. Uh, yeah, mm. but who in this crowd has a Rabbit Head? Well, Berman and Harris were talking about Marshal Weber uh, back at the place. It sounded to me as though Weber was tied in with this gang some way. Hey, that could be. He doesn't have a very good reputation. I suppose we get out of here and go visit the Marshal. Get out of here. Oh, Roy, you weren't paying me a no I think we can do it. Yes. We'll rip up those loose boards from the floor. The guards outside will figure we're trying to escape and come running in. Sure, that's it. You and Jonah pull on the boards. I'll stand by the door. Now, take them when they come in. Roy stands close to the wall beside the door. Dale and Jonah take hold of a loose floorboard. Tear it away. They do the same with the second. The noise is heard by the guards outside. They rip up a third board. They're coming. Stand back against the wall. Stay out of the way. Dale and Jonas scramble for the side wall. The door bursts open. One of the outlaws steps in. Roy hits him hard. The guard drops to the floor. His two partners lunge at Roy. Dale and Jonas move in. But so fierce is the fight, Roy sends another man sprawling before they can get there. Only one is left now. There he's going. He's gone fast. Dale, Jonah, grab their guns. You bet, Roy. Yeah, always happy to disarm the enemy. Come on, let's get out of here. Make our call on Marshal Weber. Well, Rogers, this is a surprise and an honor. It's a long time since you paid me a visit. Uh, you know Dale, don't you, Marshal? Indeed I do. The prettiest girl in the country, I always called her. How do you do, Dale? All right, up to now. And this is Jonah Wilde. Sixty-two years in the Army, private soldier all the way. Uh, this is just a social call, I take it, Roy? Well, not quite, Marshal. Uh, you're expecting some visitors, aren't you? Visitors? A man named Burma. Burma, Burma... I don't believe I know any such man, Roy. You should. He runs a hangout uh, for outlaws in your town. Now, look here, Rogers. Why should a man of that caliber call on me? Well, he wants to buy something from you. What do you know, Rogers? What do you think I know? You can't come in here and bluff me. 
I'm perfectly innocent of any wrong. Who accused you of anything, Marshal? You did? You... No, I didn't. I... Well, I... Uh, perhaps I misunderstood what you said. Burmester received some money from a convicted rustler named Dick Harris. He's to hand that money to you in exchange for something that Harris wants very badly. You've been misled, Rogers. The thing Harris wants to buy couldn't be evidence you've got against him, could it, Marshal? Evidence that would send him back to prison? No, it... Uh... Rogers, this is my office. A business office. I'd rather you didn't wait here. I'll have to arrest you for disturbing the peace unless you leave immediately. Well, Marshal, I made a wild guess, but it seems to have been a good one. Come on, Dale Jonah. We will get out of here. Three Rivers might not be a safe place for you, Rogers. I think we both know where we stand now, Marshal. Yeah, never knowed there was so much fighting outside the army. Go across the street, Dale Jonah. What for, Roy? We'll get our horses and ride around the block so you'll think we're gone. Then we'll come back and wait in the general store. Marshal Weber is expecting Burma. If not, he wouldn't have been so anxious to get rid of us. That's Burma, all right, Roy. And he's going into the Marshal's office just like you predicted. Uh -huh. We'll wait here until Burma comes out. Then we'll follow him to the edge of town and find out what it is he buys from Marshal Weber. <laughs> Burma's coming out. Let's get on his trail. Burma! Roger! How did you... Say, do you like to raid the kitchen much as folks around Double R Bar Ranch do? Well, you know what the cook out there discovered? Folks love to nibble on post-sugar crisp right out of the package. Just like candy. That's right, it's that good. And of course, Post Sugar Crisp was just made to brighten up breakfast. Mmm, just poured into a big bowl with milk or cream. You don't need sugar. That delicious candy-coated puffed wheat is just sweet enough. You'll love it served the same way between meals, too, as a special snack or just before bedtime. Yes, Post Sugar Crisp is fun to eat all day long. There's lots of wholesome goodness in Post Sugar Crisp, too. It gives you wheat for nourishment, the sugar and honey coating for quick energy. So, how about it? Have you tried Post Sugar Crisp yet? Look for it at your grocer's in the giant or regular size red, white, and blue package with the three little bears on the front. Sugar Crisp, one of the famous triple wrap Post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. <laughs> All right, Burma. You lost your gun. How does it feel? Burma sits helpless on his horse as Roy advances toward him on trigger. He fails to notice Dale and Jonah fading off to the side. Roy is almost up to Burma. Burma begins to tremble. Then in desperation, he plunges his spurs deep into the sides of his horse. The horse rears. Ah, I got him, Roy. Good work, Jonah. Yeah, I wish I'd have had my saber instead of a rope. I'm glad you used a rope, Jonah. He's in better condition for talking. Burma, we want to know what it was you bought from Marshal Weber. Just a, just a gun and a hat. Nothing else. Gun and an old hat. We'll go back with you and be on hand when you turn him over to Dick Harris. <laughs> Don't you worry about a thing, Roy. My gun will hold off four platoons of these buzzards. Go ahead, Burma. Get in that back room. Rogers, what's he doing here? Shut the door, will you, Dale? Right, Roy. This hat and gun belong to you, Harris? No, no. I never saw him before. We want you anyway. The sheriff will hold you as a witness against Bailey here in the Matt McCormick killing. Harris, you put the blame on me for killing Matt. And I was doing a job for you to help you buy back your hat and gun from the marshal. Bailey, wait. I was trying to help you. Marshal Weber agreed to sell it, and I was trying to shut get it up, for you. Bailey. Shut up! Well, I guess we got two killers instead of one. Line up here. The sheriff will be mighty glad to see you, gents. Well, we'll tell you about the money, Rogers. It's stolen, but we didn't steal it. Ren Kelly's already in jail for robbing a payroll where that money came from. Okay, tell the sheriff about it. You'll be seeing him real soon. <laughs> Mighty bad for Three Rivers to realize they've had a crooked marshal all this time. I reckon they knew it, Dale. 
And they're really glad they found a way of getting rid of him. Of course, now, if Jonah here had lived in Three Rivers, he'd have found a way long before this, wouldn't you, Jonah? Uh, yes, sir, boy. <laughs> I, I'd have took an example from Three Feet Sealy Haggerty. Mm -hmm. yeah, you see, Three Feet wasn't his right name. We just called him that because he had three feet. <laughs> I see. Here we go again, Roy. Well, sure, old Three Feet heard about a crooked supply. No, officer. sir, Dale, He's I'm not going to listen to it. I'm hungry. I'm going in and have supper. Hey, uh, Jonah, why don't you tell it to Trigger? He's a good listener. Besides, he has four feet. You know, all right, Dad, read it, I will. Trigger, this fella had to tell me. Oh, Shaw sure, Roy. Drifting along with the tumbling tumbleweed. I'm a roving cowboy. Cowboy. Right. alone and sing a tune, see them tumbling down, pledging their love to the ground, only where free I'll be found, drifting along with the tumbling tumbleweeds, cares of the past are behind. I know when night has gone that a new world's born at dawn. I'll keep rolling along. Deep in my heart is a song. Here on the range I belong. Drifting along with the tumble. has gone that a new world's born at dawn I'll keep rolling along deep in my heart is a song here on the range I belong drifting along with the tumbling tumble Along with the tumbling That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you, keep smiling until then. The Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials, each week at this same time, with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Brush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Charlie Seal, Bill Green, and Arthur Q. Bryan. This is Art Ballinger speaking for... P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling on about the clouds if we're together just sing a song and bring the sunny weather happy trails